So my question to you would be, would you rather it be a longer process but be able to lose weight and keep it off or a shorter process and have a more difficult time trying to keep the weight that you've lost off? Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Welcome to another video. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to lose weight and keep it off by highlighting three very important things. The first thing we're gonna be talking about is why diets fail you and how to prevent that. Why losing weight is so hard from a physiological standpoint. And just as a little sneak peek, a lot of these things, if not all of them, are out of your control. So we'll talk about how to mitigate some of the negative side effects of losing weight and not being able to keep it off. And then we'll talk about how to implement diet breaks to make losing weight and keeping it off even more successful. Now, before we get started, if you've done a diet in the past and you've lost weight and kept it off, I'd love to know what worked best for you. And if you've done a diet in the past and you can't seem to stick with it at all, also like to learn what you've tried and what you've done. Cool, so we're gonna start things off with why diets fail you. And I put you there and highlighted it because diets really do fail you. They set you up to do things that are going to prevent you from losing weight and keeping it off in the long haul. Now there's lots of different reasons why diets will fail you, but let's go over four of the most common ones right here. The first one is ignoring food preference. So if you're the type of person who likes to eat things like rice and potatoes and pastas and beans and you go on the keto diet, your food preference is completely 180, right? So you might have done the keto diet or a low carb diet in the past because you know, your friend or someone you know has done it, or maybe you've just seen all of the evidence that shows that people that are doing the keto diet are losing weight, even though behind the scenes there's a lot of other stuff going on, and you ignore your personal food preference, you are not going to be able to lose weight and keep it off in the long run because you're completely ignoring your food preference. If you have a specific preference for certain foods and you like to eat those foods and maybe you've been eating them your entire life, if you don't include that in your eating style, you're gonna have a very hard time keeping weight off once you've lost it during a diet. Number two is gonna to be too restrictive. If a diet is too restrictive, if it takes out your favorite foods or if it takes out foods that you enjoy, like foods that have sugar in them, so desserts or drinks or you know, just foods that have specific things in them that your diet tells you you can't eat, you are not going to have long-term success with that diet because it's too restrictive. There's something called scarcity mindset that happens when you over-restrict any sort of food. And what happens is, is the more you restrict, the more you're likely to binge on that food later. The most common example of this is when somebody says, I'm not gonna eat any sugar Monday through Friday, like you know most working days, and then on the weekends they have a little bit, but then they can't control themselves because their cravings are through the roof because they've over-restricted those types of foods. The more you restrict a food, the more you're going to want to eat it later. So having too restrictive a diet is actually counterintuitive to having a long-term successful and sustainable diet. Number three, your diet is too different from what you're already eating right now. So yes, if you're eating a lot of processed foods and you're trying to eat more whole foods, it's always a good thing to try to take steps in the direction of eating more whole foods, but you have to do it gradually. And I would recommend that you never overly restrict your favorite types of foods. So if you're the kind of person that likes to eat carbs, make sure you include carbs in your diet when you're trying to lose weight. A diet doesn't have to be completely different than what you're already eating. It just has to be a reduction in calories. So that's one of the reasons why I tell people, listen, don't try to do any specific restrictive extreme diet, just reduce the total amount of calories you're consuming and keep virtually the foods that you're eating the same. If you have to make small adjustments here or there, maybe you need more fiber, maybe you need more protein, that's fine. But on the whole, don't make it too different than what you're already eating because it's going to be very hard to maintain that over a lifetime. So number four is gonna be no planned diet breaks. If you're not taking breaks from a calorie deficit, it could be very challenging for you to lose weight and keep it off over the long haul, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. One of the most common mistakes that you are going to make when you're trying to lose weight is you think that from the moment you start your diet where you're eating less calories to the moment where you lose all the weight that you wanna lose, you have to be in a calorie deficit. And that's simply not true. Yes, a calorie deficit is how you lose weight. It's how you lose body fat. But taking breaks to reduce some of these things we'll talk about in step two can actually make it easier to do a diet long term. So we'll talk more about that in section three, but taking diet breaks is very, very important. I want you to start getting 
into the idea of taking diet breaks with you know some structure to it it's not just a free-for-all but taking caloric diet breaks where you give yourself a little bit more room to have a little more calories for a little bit longer time and then you go back into your calorie deficit so if you don't take diet breaks on your current plan it's not going to work for you long term all right so now that we've talked about some of the reasons why diets will fail you let's talk about some of the reasons why dieting is so hard and like i talked about before these things are all physiological changes that take place as you lose weight and as you have decreased calories. You do not have control over these. You cannot outdo these with uh, discipline and willpower. You can't willpower your way out of these physiological changes. This is what happens in your body when you start to lose weight. We'll talk about some ways to mitigate that later on, but I want you to, to understand that these are things that you do not have control over. Okay, so do not feel obligated to like, solve all these problems. It's more about working with these things, these changes that take place when you reduce calories and you lose weight. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the first one, which is neurological changes. So as you lose weight and as you spend more time in a calorie deficit, your brain actually becomes more aware and more hyper-focused on food in your environment. So when you're not in a calorie deficit, when you're sort of eating the amount of calories that you want to eat and you just feel comfortable with, you're not as hyper aware or obsessed with food. You're sort of just like, okay, there's some food there. You know, I'm not really hungry, I won't worry about it. When you've been in a calorie deficit long enough and you're hungry, you are not only going to notice food in your environment, you are also gonna become more food obsessive. So you're actually going to obsess about the food in the break room until you get that food. And this is an evolutionary survival mechanism that our brains developed over time because remember, we didn't evolve in a environment that had food 24 seven. A lot of times we had to find it, we had to kill it, we had to you know, forage for it. It wasn't easy to find food. So being hyper aware of your environment and being hyper aware to food in your environment was very uh, beneficial for surviving. Well, we don't live in that world anymore. In fact, we live in a world where we have access to food, some form of food, pretty much 24 seven. And yet our brains are still hardwired with this evolutionary you know, phenomenon. So what we have to be able to do is we have to understand that as we start to lose weight, as we start to you know, be in a calorie deficit for a longer period of time, we're gonna have this food obsessive behavior. And I would say that this happens mostly when you've spent a prolonged period of time in a calorie deficit. It might not happen in the first couple of days that you're on your diet or you're trying to eat less calories, but it's going to happen over the long haul. And we'll talk about later why using diet breaks can actually make this something that isn't as intense, reducing over your, your, di your diet break. All right, so now let's talk about number two, which is hormonal changes. This is probably the most insidious physiological change that happens when you're in a calorie deficit and you're losing weight. So the longer you spend in a calorie deficit, the more weight you lose, the more your body increases hunger hormones. So you might have been hungry, you know, to a decent amount. You might have been, you know, hungry like, okay, yeah, I'm a little bit hungry, but now it becomes to the point where you're actually hungry like all the time. And that's because your body wants to gain the weight that you lost back essentially. And what's happening is, is because the hunger hormones are increasing, you're gonna wanna keep eating even when you probably don't want to or you probably don't think you need to. At the same time, your body is decreasing the amount of satiety hormones that get released to your brain. So satiety is another word for fullness. So it's literally working in opposition of your intended goal, which is to lose weight and to reduce calories. So you're gonna be hungrier, and then when you eat, you're going to feel less full into your meal because you're down-regulating, or your body's down-regulating, your fullness hormones as well as your hunger hormones. So this is something that takes a lot of you know, understanding to be able to mitigate, and we're gonna talk about how to mitigate that with diet breaks a little bit later on. But this is a physiological change on a hormonal level that happens any time that you diet. And I would say that this is probably the number one reason why losing weight and keeping it off is very challenging. And unless you do it very strategically, this can be the thing that sabotages you the most. All right, so the third reason is a biological change. So as you lose weight, your overall calorie burn, just being alive, decreases. So this is what's referred to as BMR, basal metabolic rate. Your basal metabolic rate is how many calories you burn just standing up, being alive, being an active human. It doesn't include exercise. It doesn't include the calories you burn eating food. It just counts for the amount of calories you burn to keep your organs running, to stand upright, to be able to walk to and from places, things like that. So let's say that you're burning, just your BMR is 2000. 
as you start to lose weight, your BMR is going to decrease. Maybe it goes from 2000 to 1800 to 1750. And the more weight you lose, the more your BMR decreases. Now this is a natural part of losing weight. There's nothing you can do necessarily to dramatically affect this. There's no way to like mitigate this effect to a large degree, but there are some things that you can do to help reduce the uh, likelihood that you have a very low functioning metabolism over time. And the Two major things are making sure that when you're losing weight, you're also not losing muscle mass. Because aside from functioning and, and running your organs, your muscle mass is the most metabolic tissue on your body. So we wanna make sure that we keep as much muscle mass on our body as we possibly can. And a lot of times when somebody loses weight, they just try to eat less calories, which is a great start. But if you're not also trying to preserve your muscle mass or even build muscle mass, provided you're you know, somebody who's really new to strength training, you can lose uh, body fat and build muscle at the same time. But if you're sort of a veteran or you're more intermediate, you're gonna have to separate those two phases. But getting back to the point, strength training can help you build or maintain your muscle mass, mass while you are dieting. So it's very important to make sure that you keep strength training in a program where you are also trying to eat less calories, okay? The other thing that's important to understand is that you want to be able to keep yourself full for longer. Now we talked about earlier how your satiety hormones are gonna be decreasing and your hunger hormones are gonna be increasing. So what you wanna be able to do to mitigate some of this biological uh, decrease in calorie burn is you wanna be able to eat more foods that have protein, water, and fiber in them. Now this is typically what's referred to as volume eating. Now volume eating essentially is getting foods that have a high volume so you can eat a lot of them but have a low calorie amount. So think about your fruits, your vegetables, your proteins, the foods that are rich in those three things including water which most, most fruits and vegetables are and even proteins to an extent. The more of those foods you can eat, the easier it's going to be to reduce the negative side effects of having low satiety hormones, okay? So anyway, that's when, when we're talking about biological changes, that is something that's going to happen whether you like it or not. And all three of these are out of your control. And I don't say that to be like, you know, to, to make you worry or be con, you know, consumed with those thoughts. These are just things that are going to happen when you lose weight. And all we have to do is change our strategy a little bit and implement some of these diet breaks to make some of these things not as difficult to deal with. All right, so number three, and probably the part that you're most interested in hearing about is learning how to implement diet breaks so that losing weight and keeping it off is a lot easier to do. All right, now don't get me wrong, dieting and losing weight is challenging, but why not try to do it the most strategic and intelligent way possible so it's not as bad as it could be? One other thing to keep in mind is that the success rate of most dieters is anywhere between 12 to 19%. So that means that the vast majority of people who diet fail at dieting and they don't lose the weight and, and are not able to keep it off, which is very discouraging. But I'm gonna show you how to make this a lot easier to do and how you can be more successful with losing weight and keeping it off with our first third step here, which is diet breaks and, and how to implement them strategically. The point at which most of you are going to feel as though you need a break from your diet is around the eight week mark. Sometimes it's six to eight weeks. Some people can go you know, 10 weeks, but on average, it's going to be like the six to eight week mark. So as you start to notice that your adherence to your diet is a lot harder to maintain, that might be a good time to implement a diet break. Now you might be wondering, what is a diet break essentially? If you think about a diet, a diet is a consistent caloric deficit. And if you're consistently sticking to your calorie deficit number and you're not veering too far out of that, then you're going to be consistently burning more and more calories, which means you're gonna lose more and more body fat. Well, over time, your body's gonna start reacting with these physiological changes. So what you wanna do is you want to adjust your calories for a series of probably days or even weeks possibly, at a maintenance amount. Now remember, when you lose weight, your calorie totals change. So it's not the maintenance that you necessarily started with at the beginning of your diet, it's the maintenance that's going to be your current 
calorie deficit. So if you've adjusted your calories to become a little bit lower over time, then your calorie maintenance is going to adjust with that. So to throw some numbers out there so you understand what I'm talking about, let's say your calorie deficit number, meaning the amount of calories you, you know for sure you can eat to lose weight is 2,000. Well, in that case, your maintenance might be 2,200 calories or maybe even 2,300 calories. So what you would do during this diet break is you would eat at maintenance calories so that your weight stays the same and that we mitigate some of these, what I would call negative or side effects from a physiological standpoint, right? Because when you give your body a little bit more calories, some of these start to go away. It starts to go, oh, okay, you're giving me calories. I don't have to worry about becoming obsessed with food or trying to find a ton of food in my environment. I can uh, stop trying to upregulate your hunger hormones and, st and stop trying to downregulate your satiety hormones. And at the same time, you're sort of giving yourself a little bit of a balance with your consistent decrease of your BMR, or your total calories burned a day. And so not only is that a good break physiologically, but psychologically, it's also a good break. Okay. What you're, if you're strength training or you're exercising, you're also going to notice that your workouts are going to feel a lot better because you're not consistently eating less calories and, you know, having less fuel to, you know, fuel your workouts. So that's one of the most important things about a diet break is it gives you a break from the constant sort of, uh, uh, grind of consistent eating less calories because it again it does have some serious physiological uh, effects when you decrease your calories the next question that I typically get is well how long should my diet break be and what I like to say is start with a week and see how it goes if you have relatively high levels of body fat and you're starting to notice that around eight weeks that your your adherence to your diet is, is starting to decrease take a week off eat at maintenance calories so you're still tracking you're still doing your workouts everything stays the same, you're just consuming a little bit more calories. Do that for a week. If you start to notice that your hunger isn't you know, out of whack, if you're starting to notice that your appetite is starting to regulate a little bit better, if you're starting to notice you're not as obsessed with food, if your workouts are better, if your sleep is better, those are all good signs that your, your maintenance period or your diet break is really working for you. What I would recommend is if you notice all those things after a week, go back on your calorie deficit the following week. If you don't notice these things, take another half week, so, you know, three or four days, and then just continue going on until you start to notice some of these negative physiological side effects of dieting start to decrease. And then when they start to decrease, you go back on your diet for, you know, I don't know, six to eight weeks is probably a good thing to sort of shoot for as a, as a target. And then you just s sort of re repeat and rinse or rinse and repeat this process and over time, you know, six to nine to 12 months, you are going to consistently lose weight and keep it off. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that's gonna take, you know, a year. That's a long time to have to be on a diet. But remember, it's much better than trying to go from point A to point B consistently all the way through in a calorie deficit. If you take these, these marginal breaks, these short periods where you're, you're, you're basically resetting your psychology and, and even your physiology to a degree with some of these breaks from a caloric standpoint, that's going to prolong your ability to not only lose weight, but then keep it off. So my question to you would be, would you rather it be a longer process, but be able to lose weight and keep it off or a shorter process and have a more difficult time trying to keep the weight that you've lost off? I would imagine that 99.9999999% of you are tired of losing weight and gaining it back. So this strategy where you implement diet breaks could really be beneficial. All right, so that is my video on how to make losing weight and keeping it off a lot easier by implementing diet breaks. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please let me know either in the comment section below or you can contact me on social media or you can even email me. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell so you get notifications when I come out with new videos and then hit that like button and then if you have any comments down below that you'd like to leave, don't forget to leave a comment. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in a future video. And even though know we had different daddies, the same drama with things went wrong. We blamed mama. I reminisce on the stress. Oh, it was hell. Hugging on my mama from a jail cell. And we think in elementary. Hey, I see the penitentiary. One day, running from the